Today we have a very special guest on our show. She is the founder of the newly launched startup hyphen.social. She is the ex CEO of the Indian unicorn Mu Sigma and she is one of the most successful Indian entrepreneurs in India and the world. I'm talking about none other than Ambika Subramanian. Welcome her to Ask Vishwas show. Thank you so much for being here today on Ask Vishwas show. Uh, Ambika, so everybody knows you as a superwoman, a very successful business personality, but nobody knows you as a person. So we would like to know and our audience would like to know who really Ambika Subramanian is. Sure. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me here. It's my pleasure. Um, so who is Ambika Subramanian? Huh? Um, I am a mom of a 15-year-old boy, um, an adorable boy. Um, I am the co-founder of a very young startup, hyphen.social. Um, I'm an angel investor. Um, I come from um, a place called Tirunal Veli in Tamil Nadu. I uh, grew up there. I did my college in Chennai, then went to the US for my master's, got a job there, got married, um, had my son. I worked at Motorola uh, Research as a researcher for many years. And then my ex-husband and I, we started uh, Mu Sigma, uh, the uh, popular um, big data, data and analytics company. Yeah. 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 Um, and about two years back, uh, we parted ways. And after that, I started my new venture, hyphen.social. We just lo launched the app two weeks back on uh, Play Store and App Store. We'll talk about that more. Absolutely. I think this is a very right time to get her on this show. We just, just now launched her new startup. Okay, so um, one thing that you know everybody has been looking up to you, that has been you are the first woman CEO of an Indian unicorn, which is like a phenomenal achievement in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also one of the richest self-made women in India and across the, the globe. So what is the success story behind Ambika? Sure. Um, so the, the story comes from, uh, from uh, Mu Sigma. Uh, it was, a, uh, it was a, a fantastic time to be in that space and I think it is still a great sure. space to be in. And um, in that, um, I think we kind of made a mark for ourselves by doing a bunch of uh, right things. Um, the, it was a very intense experience uh, for about 10 years that I was there. So at that time, um, there were management consulting companies, um, strategy consulting companies helping people with um, you know, more strategic business problems, giving them advice, but not taking them all the way through execution. There were IT companies who um, helped uh, their clients with their technological needs, but there was no one really um, helping them end to end solving their, their problems. And the, the need was really staring at us. And we kind of tackled one problem at a time. Um, I had the opportunity to sort of grow bottoms up uh, in the company. I started as a, as a uh, just managing one large account for the company out of Chicago and uh, from there you know did, did various things because the, uh, you know as you can imagine a growing company needs help in you know many many different funds right. so yeah in that process I had my hands touching in you know, every aspect of the company I was rarely the front face of the company, but kind of had my hands on everything. And I, uh, when I when I left the company, I was the the CEO, CEO. of yeah. the company. It's yeah, quite a journey. It, it, it was upon the entire hierarchy. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, quite an intense experience. Yeah, lots of ups downs, um, but but you got to see in action so many large companies and their own you know uh, their own problems, and you know to be able to help them uh, with that was a, was a wonderful experience. And we had a team that just simply put their head down and uh, worked uh, all the time and um, I remember working without knowing weekend weekdays it was it was all all the same and um, just a great experience absolutely I think it's one of the companies everybody looks up to sure you know, even till today right. yeah and absolutely. I think uh, it's gonna go ahead to the next level I'm pretty sure of course about it. yeah so as a you know being a woman entrepreneur and a woman executive senior executive itself is a rare uh, thing in a technology setup yeah so any challenges there any biases that you had to fight or in any uh, any challenges sure. there basically so i i don't think i i 
sort of personally felt any uh, gender bias per se. Uh, having said that, when when people do talk to me about it, I, I have I have a lot of appreciation for that. I think it exists, it's real, and and as a society, we should uh, we should do a lot more to to fix that. But I personally don't recall uh, facing that. Um, um, but uh, but what what strikes me a lot is just generally how hard it is for it's not because of anyone's bias but just the role that we take on in the society is just very hard for for women to do um, everything that you are uh, sort of expected to do and one example is as a, as a mom i hate staying away from my son i hate travel and i ruthlessly uh, cut down travel and and it certainly comes in the way it's a big disadvantage when you have to uh, take care of so many different things you can you can sort of overcome that by uh, by sort of over indexing on your remote uh, you know working and so on i and having a team that you trust and so on and so forth but mm -hmm. but there are definitely challenges in as a woman in the workforce and if you have to move forward and and take on more and more scale and take on more and more responsibilities yeah absolutely so you have to juggle around a lot of things yeah you have to juggle around a lot of things yeah see one thing that um, you know, after the successful stint at um, Music Map, so what made you actually exit um, Music sure. Map at, at because you were like the peak? Yeah, yeah. So it was a very complicated personal situation that that led to it. My uh, the company was started uh, by me and my ex husband, and uh, we were together in the company, running the company. And uh, two years back, we kind of split. Uh, ways on the personal life and it didn't make sense to be in the company together and I chose to uh, get out and uh, both uh, from my ownership perspective as well as the operational role that I played. Um, so yeah, that, that was the reason for, for uh, coming out of that and starting my new venture. So now to the, all the new exciting stuff, sure. so we would like to know and everybody else wants to know now, so what is Hyphen Social? That's a new sure. startup that yeah. you have um, just started now and we'd like to know about the team, the, the idea behind it and what sure. really um, is the the can go about the whole thing. Sure, sure, sure. So hyphen.social is a, is a social networking platform. Um, I was looking at many different ideas to sort of pursue because, you know, after after many years, you come out of one space and I, I couldn't do anything in, in the analytics space because of the uh, the non-compete non that I had uh, with the company. So the, so the rest of the world was wide open and how do you pick something <laughs> to work on, right, in yeah. that? So I was considering many different things and uh, this was one of them. And the, the real impetus for this came when the US elections happened. Um, and one fine day, you know, we, uh, the results came out and uh, it was a shocker for, for all of us. Uh, when everyone was so sure that one candidate was gonna win and, and just the, the whole thing came upside down. So, uh, it, so it, it kind of posed a deep question around, um, do we know what people around us are even thinking? And uh, even if your own, and it, it also made me look back at certain data points, oh, this happened to me. Um, I was speaking to somebody uh, in, in my community who was a supporter of a particular candidate and I remember him saying, but I don't feel comfortable saying that to, to anyone because people sort of, you know, pounce on you when I say I support so and so. So, and same thing happened in another um, WhatsApp group. Um, so it's just, uh, I felt that maybe people are uncomfortable even in their own known groups of friends and communities in sharing what they feel. So that kind of led to this um, uh, this idea for hyphen.social, which is essentially um, allowing, uh, enabling people to speak their mind within their friend circles, within within their communities that they that they know. Um, and how do you allow? Uh, and and the and there are two key key questions that I want to understand through this experiment, and that is. Um, does the power of anonymity uh, allow people to speak more freely? Mm -hmm. And secondly, um, do people abuse the power of anonymity less when you're speaking with your known circle of friends as opposed to just the larger public? Can we get more people to speak freely mm -hmm. uh, through anonymity given a particular context? I call it contextual anonymity. And once given that power, um, would they use it more responsibly if they know who they're speaking to? So that's the idea behind Highlander Social. We're actually targeting um, colleges and young people to see uh, if in that context people can have fun at the same time be responsible. Sure. Yeah. And this is already launched right now? Yeah, it's on. It is uh, on Play Store and uh, an App Store. Uh, so people can download and try it out. Absolutely. So if you are watching this, you please download the app and uh, give it a spin.
and sure, you know thank you. definitely give us the feedback as well. Absolutely, I would love to hear your feedback, and uh, I just want to get my questions answered through my platform. Is 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 anonymity going to be yeah. uh, useful in the context of known groups, and uh, could people use that for uh, in a in responsible and fun manner? So, as an entrepreneur, what has been your biggest challenge, and what has been your biggest learning? Sure. Um, I don't know if I can say there's one uh, biggest, uh, yeah. but there were many. Let's just yeah. as you can imagine, there's Absolutely. there are just many challenges that you go through, and you know you live and learn. Um, there were many around um, uh, around. Is your is your idea? And I still I still go through that. Um, you know, is your idea even any good? Yeah. Uh, first, you need you know validation for that through through your own you know your service, your product. Um, there are, there are challenges around just. You know, disappointments. You you tend to when, when at least in the, in the initial stages, you want help from anybody and and everybody, right? And and sometimes you have to face disappointments from from people. You expected you know so and so to do something and so on. So you have to you have to deal with those disappointments. You um, the how to be you know financially savvy is a is a big one. Whether you have the money for your venture or not, either way, yeah. um, how to be financially savvy is a is a is a big one as an entrepreneur. Um, and then there is just you know your own personal demons to to deal with. Why are you even pursuing? While it's a it's a it's a you know buzzword. It's a hot topic to be an entrepreneur uh, now. But um, usually people are driven by something. You know that that makes them want to do that. And what and we tend to not have clarity around it. So um, I think when you get that clarity, then you can put it to you know good use. So that those are you know your own internal demons to to deal with as well. So there's just challenges across across so many different dimensions yeah, as an entrepreneur. And um, I think the more you introspect and think through it, you will kind of, you know, you have figure out your own solutions along the way. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, you have been a role model to a lot of people out there. Who is your role model? Sure. Yeah. I have a very personal answer to that. And that's my role model has been my dad. Um, father. Yeah, my father. He's he's no more, um, but I still think about a lot of his words on a on a daily basis. Um, just just many things, and his work ethic was just phenomenal. And uh, I think um, whatever kept me going over the last many years, and I was uh, wherever I worked, I was known for putting in you know a lot of hours and you know sincerity in my work. And and I think that kind of comes from him. And I uh, there's, there's one thing that. Um, that sort of I remember on a daily basis from him is, is are you useful to people? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a um, so I just you know that kind of drives me that uh, yeah. that one question. If if I can't answer that, then it's very uh, the, it, I, I get very itchy that day. Going to the next question, what I would like to know is, as a person, what drives you and what motivates you? Sure. Like how do you get up in the morning and say that okay? I I want to do this. Yeah. So as far as motivation is concerned, I it's very hard, but I I think of it as you don't have a choice. Look at the alternative. The alternative is just depression. So it's just you know, so there is no choice but to feel motivated to to get up and and do something uh, on a daily basis. So that's kind of how I think about it. But having said that, it's not it's not easy, uh, especially when times are rough and and so on. Um, but but I think it helps to. To, to think that it is not a choice. It's just, you just have to do it. If you have to live, you have to, you have to do that. The alternates are not great. Um, so as far as, you know, what, what drives me to do that, I think the, the being useful question is, uh, is very, very helpful. Uh, and, and that allows you to, um, to also, you know, not just be worried about the larger purpose and things like that, because that'll come over a period of time. But it kind of uh, can help you think about what is the little things that you can do right. uh, to keep yourself going on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. And outside of work, what are your passions, hobbies? Yeah, a good one. I. Yeah. Um, it changes. Okay. Uh, uh, season to season. Um, but uh, if there's one thing that I've realized I seem to have as a um, that has stayed on for a, for a long time is I think I have a little research gene in me, <laughs> and uh, my family is constantly making fun of fun of that. So um, I I'm somebody who who can spend time uh, reading scientific papers. 
uh, at night I can fall asleep huh. <laughs> reading scientific papers but no Netflix uh, uh, yeah no Netflix for me <laughs> um, and uh, and lately over the last uh, I'd say you know two three years I have really caught on to understanding the you know human body the biology and how they're connected and uh, there's also there's so much happening in healthcare and, and so on yeah. right and and uh, innovation in that space but I, I kind of go read up a lot and I uh, my nieces and nephews are making fun of me all the time saying I'm the unofficial medical researcher in the family. Um, I, I, I do a lot, I do that a lot. Uh, apart from that, I spend time with my son and I have a two-year-old dog uh, who's a lot of fun to play with. Um, yeah, that's how I spend my time. Yeah. The last question is, um, what message do you have for the youth? The one thing that I want to, uh, if I could suggest to people is, it's easy to have your first question uh, that, that come to your mind as, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's okay. it's good. You should you should have that. Um, but uh, along with that, I think a world of opportunities will open up if people were to think of you know what's what can I do for somebody else and you know the the world around you. So the, I'll go back to that useful point. Um, I think it is very. Um, helpful in cheering you up as well as opening up opportunities because you kind of um, uh, go from the mode of okay how, how will I get the next big opportunity to rise up and you kind of switch that from what can I do for somebody for something some project wh whatever it is and once you once you you know, change the dialogue from what opportunities can come to me. If you if you switch the dialogue to this, you will automatically find things that uh, to do, and uh, and you will keep navigating that path, and you will you will you will find new doors open up for you. So I would I would say, um, while you ask what's in it for me, um, add add the question of what can I do for for someone else. Um, I think that uh, that will in return it'll come back and help you in so many different ways. So that brings us to the end of the show and I cannot thank you enough for uh, coming here. So thank you so much. Thank it's you for having me. Thank yeah. you for having me.